got it. So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your interest, uh, especially in the part of WordPress community team. We all know that WordPress uh, have like bundles of WordPress teams, 2020, 2024, the current one. And besides that, uh, Maggie and some of the uh, uh, community members come up with an idea about building the community teams. I don't know all uh, the uh, scene behind that, but uh, that was really a good idea. And we started developing few themes. I think two of them are live right in WordPress data. And uh, and we also have to come back to the default WordPress theme as well and again back to the community theme. So whenever we get time, we uh, want to work on the community themes so that we can deliver the quality themes for free, those who are looking for quality themes in WordPress data block theme, to be honest. So uh, at first, I think we can do a short introduction uh, because we are meeting for the first time. And then we have a long way to go building uh, block themes. We'll talk about how we get a start and something like that. So I would like to start from myself. Self, I'm Ganga Kafle. I'm full-time WordPress contributor. Uh, and my time is sponsored by RankPair, the SEO company. And I have been contributing to WordPress uh, for more than 10 years. Uh, so I am still in the part of uh, WordPress community uh, contribution. And I am currently in the uh, position of WordPress.org theme team as a team representative and also a community member um, uh, mentoring WordCamps uh, and meetups and all. So I'm a full-time WordPress contributor. So Maggie, I think you can start. Yeah, uh, my name is Maggie, I'm from Spain. Um, I've been in the community working as, uh, as a contributor, working full time for almost four years now, four years, uh, mostly contributing to Gutenberg and also uh, very active in the blog theme space, both uh, building them and um, later on I was uh, co-lead of 2024, of the development part of it. Um, um, yeah, and mostly my day-to-day -day job is working on Gutenberg. Uh, yeah, um, the community themes idea came up um, after, I think it was developing, 20, working on 2021. Um, we felt like it was really, really cool working with all those contributors at the same time, developing mm -hmm. the theme. But that was, that it was um, like a shame that it ended, that it was like three months of a sprint working really hard on that one theme and then everyone mm -hmm. goes their own way and no one does anything else to develop until the next one. Um, and we're always uh, needing more block themes and it's something that is still really new and not everyone knows how they're built and keeping that space where you can build it together with other people that are um, more or less experts as much as you can be for a technology that's been around less than three years um it would be really helpful to um keep that momentum co going the whole year round that's mm -hmm. why we decided to build community themes it's less pressure than a default theme you don't have the uh constraints that a that a default theme has because it will go to every single installation of wordpress for a year um while still ke keeping um a good code quality and uh, standards um, required for a project that is built um, from WordPress contributors and having the support of people who have the knowledge, but still allowing um, new contributors to have the possibility to contribute to that. I think it's a good opportunity for everyone. And um, when I talked to Harry about the mentorship program, it was like, it felt like an amazing combination of the two, having um, new contributors join and be able to build themes with uh, with us, it would it felt like the right match. Like you, we don't need like uh, super experts in the community themes area. We just need people who are excited to learn and pick it up. Um, Sandra, can you can you introduce yourself if you are around? Hey people, my name is Sandro. I'm from Brazil, São Paulo. And I'm just starting contributing right now. It's my first time, so I'm kind of lost here. I uh, don't feel that that's safe making contributions uh, con contributions right uh, already. So 
let's take it easy. I'll just watching things, uh, doing things in my place. And well, about me, I'm a junior full stack web WordPress developer slash web developer. And uh, currently working as a freelance developer, looking for a full-time job. That's why I couldn't make it to the meetings yesterday. I was doing so many interviews and dealing with clients. So uh, I think that, uh, that is it. Anna, can you go? Yeah. Um, I'm not good in English, but I try my my, uh, my best. <laughs> Uh, I'm con I've been contributing to WordPress uh, uh, for seven years. Nice. Um, community uh, most of the time uh, because I'm running my my town uh, meetup. Mm. Torrelodones. We have a work camp uh, next month in March. Um, I am the the lead organizer. And um, you are all invited if you want to come to my to my village, my little village in Madrid, in Spain. It's the best uh, work camp ever in the world. <laughs> it's, it's the the truth. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, well, I'm a designer. I don't know too much about. Um, blogs um uh, theme blogs because uh, i'm uh, not uh, using used uh, a lot now but i i want to learn uh, mm -hmm. this month i don't have the too much time <laughs> is, is the truth because uh, the work camp asia and work camp torrelodones but next month um April, I'm ready to learn a lot and work hard to to contribute to the to the team. Okay, um, I'm very happy. I'm very grateful to to be part of this program. So thank you. Next, okay. Ohio. Yeah. Um. I'm Ohio. I've been living in Spain for four years, but I'm from the States and I've lived outside of the States on and off for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I am I consider myself really lucky that I landed in Spain. Um, well, I love Spain and I want to live here, but the community here is amazing. And it's um, there are so many opportunities to go to word camps and meetups and it's just super saturated for like the land size, the amount of, of opportunities to connect in person in the community is incredible. And I think if I wasn't living here, I wouldn't be so connected, but over the last like year and a half, I really got sucked into the community here. Um, and so 20 years ago, I graduated from design school. They weren't teaching me the internet. Um, mm -hmm. It was a design school in Omaha, Nebraska. So it wasn't like cutting edge, but I won awards for design and typography and things like that, national awards. And um, then I pretty much left society for six years and went on some really awesome adventures, came back and immediately won a design contest. And after six years, you know, everyone was making the internet. So I learned how to do that. Um, I'm pretty much self-taught. I would say I'm a, I'm a designer developer. Um, hello. Um, so uh, UI UX. Um, I'm currently helping to implement the design of the WordCamp Europe team, which is really helping me learn a ton about the block editor because there are major constraints there. Um, and I challenged myself a year ago to start learning how to use block themes anyway. Um, and so doing WordCamp Europe right now, um, you're really learning the editor. And my goal when I joined this mentorship was 
to sort of learn how to be able to contribute to like tickets of design and design feedback of how the back end is is working. Um, but I also think that like learning how to make themes with um, mentors, because I'm majorly self-taught over the last 20 years as far as making the internet goes, right? Um, and things work, but like, I don't know if I'm using best practices. So I'd love to like follow and have a mentor show me that. Um, and then I know everything that I'm, I learn in this um, mentorship is going to help me move forward into working on the back end or testing the back end or being able to help in the back end. Um, and so I've a couple more things. I've been freelance with the same marketing company for like 15 years at this point, main web developer, designer, and other things designer. Um, I would love to eventually become sponsored like all of us, I'm sure. Uh, and, uh, I helped organize WordCamp Sevilla and WordCamp Day there, but like loosely, I've been an organizer for WordCamp Europe for the past two years on the community team. And if there is an opportunity for me to volunteer at the WordCamps in Spain or Portugal, I'm pretty much there doing it. So um, for me, it's both uh, a Spanish lesson and a lesson on, you know, how to run things, how to be efficient how to help the leaders of the word camp um and i am currently um organizing word camp granada malaga um and i will be creating the design and implementing it on the website there so yay design mm -hmm. <laughs> oh hiya <Yes>. out <laughs> elsa Hi, hello, my name is Elsa. Uh, I'm from Spain, from Madrid, but I was live uh, now in Australia. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, one I I was live one year in Australia and come back to my home in the next month. And I travel to the work in Asia and then go to Madrid. Uh, work um Torrelodones. <laughs> uh, my first work camp um is twenty two uh, work camp Grignon. And the feeling in this work camp is very good feeling. And now this is my years for contributor day, and I would like learn a lot of. Work oh, uh, WordPress, uh, inside. Um, in Madrid, I I am teacher for WordPress, too. Uh, in the CIE school, mm -hmm. and yeah, I would like to uh, learn more. For uh, sorry, my English is not really good. One year here, but. It's not, maybe I need two or three years for a speak uh, well. <laughs> and I'm very excited. Thank you for, for accepting me to the team. And woohoo! <laughs> awesome. I think your English is great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> If you, if you, if there's something you don't understand, you just uh, DM me in Spanish, and yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Spencer, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh sure, uh, I'm Spencer. I'm from the Philippines. Um, if you don't know where that is, it's in Southeast Asia. Um, what else? I'm a designer. I'm currently freelancing. I have a background. Uh, actually started more with graphic design, more print and branding. Um, used to do agency work. Uh, eventually, like most people, like most designers, I have transitioned to doing web design. Um, started just learning HTML, CSS, and then I worked with a client that wanted me to learn WordPress. And then 
kind of snowballed from there. Um, at a certain point, I figured out uh, coding wasn't for me. So I kind of uh, moved away from coding and just focused on the design because I feel like when I did both, I tend to compromise based on my skill level. Like I wanted to do a certain design and then I couldn't really figure out how to execute it. I would change the design instead. Um, yeah, so at a certain point, I focused more on the design side. Um, I have been a part of our local WordCamp for about six years now. Um, and then I'm currently part of the WordCamp Asia uh, design team. That's why I was late because I was joining the meeting. We had our final meeting before uh, leaving for Taipei next week. And yeah, I'm hoping to be able to contribute more to the WordPress project because when I tried looking at contributing before, I couldn't really figure out where to begin especially as a designer compared to like, I guess a lot of the more accessible parts of contributing is really, I feel like it's through development rather than design. And I hear that it's always hard to get, uh, even with contributor days to get uh, a design table formed because of it. <laughs> and yeah, so, um. Thankfully, there's this mentorship program that um, will allow us to use our design skills even with other parts of uh, the contribution. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. AG? You want to introduce yourself? Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Ajit. I'm from Ajit. Kerala, uh, India. So, yeah, I have been part of the community for last uh, six or seven years. So, I help organizing meetups on our local group. I think currently we have around 2,600 members or something like that. So, and I help organize uh, multiple editions of webcam mostly in our local region so the reason when we did that is uh, the wordpress photo festival so and <clears throat> and i'm i'm a, I'm, a, I'm a full stack wordpress developer and i'm i create themes plugins and mostly custom things for the clients so i do some design so yeah <laughs> So mostly I'm uh, converting the designs given by me. So I'm making themes and plugins and things like that. So then I have been working on WordPress for like, I'm not sure, maybe around 15 years, I think, at this point. OK, I'm trying to contribute before, but I didn't get an idea to do how. So on from the design themes. So. And I'm actively contributing in other parts like Polyglot. So I did some translations over there and I'm a, I am an editor, I think. So also I'm a part of the WordPress photo teams. So yeah, I think uh, also the new blog team and I, I haven't tried it. So I think this is a good way to get started and learn to know that too. So yeah, that's all for me. Oh, hi, do you have a question? Did you raise your hand or is it? Oh, I think it's the yeah, emoji I, thing. Oh, never mind. That I hate that yeah, yeah. feature. <laughs> I, so I wanted <laughs> to add um, uh, on to what Spencer said. Like, um, Anna invited me to like co lead a design table with her. And I really mm -hmm. got to see, like, there, I think from my experience and going to the design table at almost all the Spanish word camps in the last year and a half, which is a lot like 
the I think maybe sometimes the participants of the design team table come and they think they're gonna like make a cool design and what needs to be they need to understand is like they're gonna learn how to get into helping the back end design and I think that can be hard for the team leads for the table leads to like help them understand or help create enthusiasm because we're not really designing most of the time I don't think and so another reason so me and Anna sort of started trying to respond to design and design feedback tickets together and that's sort of how we me and and Anna came into this mentorship we she inspired me to do that she and so um yeah the the design table at at uh contributor day I think can be tricky and it would be really awesome to brainstorm during this about how we inspire people or how to have a clear plan when we're at a design table on contributor day of getting people hooked to stay contributing you know like I wrote up a little um like class plan kind of and me and Anna together did a pretty good job but you know we're making community themes how do we bring that into um a design table at contributor day and say here are these awesome opportunities but also here are design feedback and design tickets. So maybe we could touch on that during this. If not, that's cool too, maybe in the future. But thanks for speaking up about that, Spencer, because it is a tricky thing to navigate the design table. Okay, okay yeah. I want to I wanna try and not take much of our time because I think it's really easy to... Um, talk about these th these things that we are so passionate about, and uh, end up like spending two hours, and we we solve the, uh, all the problems in the world and all that. And I really want to introduce to what we're gonna do and all the different ways that we can uh, work in this project together. And I think it's very important what you mentioned because I think that's uh, the core of the reason why I, um, this initiative started, like specifically the community themes bit. Uh, there, there is a very big overlap between developer work and design here um, that was never there before. Usually uh, themes were maybe designed by, by a designer, but then built always by a developer or by a designer that could develop. That is no longer the case. Uh, the Hopefully the future of this project is that designers will do everything themselves and no, this, no developer is needed. Uh, there is still a space for developers. There is more than a space for developers in this uh, in building block themes, uh, but hopefully it's it's uh, a new tool for designers um, to be confident and to empower themselves without the need of um, needing how to go. Really, um, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna share my screen and show you the the repo that we're gonna work on, and I'm gonna go uh, through all the options that we have really quickly. Please um, do ask all the questions that you uh, feel that you have. Um, if not during this call, if you can't just DM or use the, the Slack channel and please uh, ask all the questions, which I, I'm certain that you will have after this because there's a lot uh, to share and it might be a little over overwhelming if it's the first time that you uh, work on something like this. This is the repo that we're working on. I'm gonna share a link on the Zoom chat. Uh, where is the Zoom chat? Can you? Ah. I'm gonna share the link in the chat. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you have my link, so please uh, share them if you can. Um, this is where we're working on. There is a readme file here that I really encourage you to read. You may not understand most of it, but um, just give it a glance so that you know that more or less what, what is explained here. Um, it's mostly a guide of uh, particulars and how to um, contribute in mostly um, a set of links for you to get some documentation on how to build block themes and how block themes work and how they are uh, submitted to the directory and what those rules are and 
how other themes like 2023 uh, were built. This is copied from the 2024 repo, I think. Um, so that you can use this readme file as a reference when you start working. Um, there is many ways that we can work uh, together, both developers and designers. Right now, this repo has multiple themes. It has 2021 blocks, which is a blockified version of 2021, which was a classic theme built with PHP and all that. It's a term, which is, an, right now it's literally empty. It's just the basic files and it's an empty theme uh, ready for us to work on it. It's uh, the theme that um, hopefully is gonna be the one that we uh, end up contributing more here. Tax is an already developed theme. It's finished. You can download it and check it. It's a really simple one. Um, Pur is another theme that it's mid in mid development. That it's uh, there's some issues open for it that you can um, work on, but it's not finished. Same goes for poetry. Poetry has templates, but it's also missing some stuff that uh, that, that has issues open for it and that we can contribute to. Blue Note is one of the other finished uh, themes. You can also download it and see. Uh, so you can probably Blue Note is a good theme to use as a reference if you want to see how a full theme is built. It's a would, would want to use. And Atlas is also in development, but this is probably not going to be one that we're going to be working on because it's uh, it's mainly it's it's kind of like a pet project of one of the contributors and. It doesn't have many issues open that we can work on. Um, there is multiple ways that we can contribute to one of these themes. Um, it goes from um, triaging the, the issues that are open, uh, helping with the descriptions of them. I'm gonna show you a few of them. Uh, most of our issues have the name of the theme before the, the the title of the of the issue that uh, we get to work on, for example, um, let me check term. It has a, an about page, for example, right? Uh, the description of the issue is lacking. <laughs> I just put, uh, put a a picture of the design that we can find if we go to term new theme. This is the overview issue for this theme and has a link to, to the Figma file with the designs for this thing. Uh, not everything is designed for this thing and you can open it and you'll see and you can check how things are built. But it's a starting point for us to work. There's not, none of this is developed yet. We only have the Figma designs and we have opened a few issues to work on. For example, if you wanna work on, the, on that um, about page, do you have the, the, the way it should look. And the idea is that we create a pull request with the code that will show how to build this thing. How are we going to do this? The way that we can do this is mainly building using create block theme. This is um, and the empty theme that it's right now term. It has nothing. It has no design whatsoever. I only added the, the sans serif fonts to it. It has just one index template that is basically just a query loop. The way we work is we use create block theme, which is a plugin that um, we we want to download. It's on, on the readme file. You can, um, everything that I'm explaining, it, it will be uh, explained on the readme file. Um, when we make changes in the editor, like we add a new template, for example, let's create a new template and say, we're gonna create, create the pages template. And we create it and we skip it and then add a paragraph, paragraph block pages. And we save. And now we see that we have pages template, okay? So then when we go to create block theme, we export, we we can yeah we can export or overwrite depending on what we want. If we export, we're gonna create a zip file. I'm not sure if I can. Oh, I, I don't think you can share it. Ah, uh, 
this exporting will uh, give you a file with the code specific for the template that we've created. So we don't really need to know how to create the, the template ourselves. We just need to know how to do it in the editor. And by exporting, we get the files. So everything is done in the editor. That's why I think there's so much that the designers can do um, that without needing how to code at all. Um, the only um, requirement that we're gonna really have is knowing more or less how to navigate GitHub. I think there's been um, a hangout from the contributor mentorship uh, program about explaining how GitHub works. If you haven't joined that, I don't know if it happened already or if it's going to happen in the future. If you haven't already uh, joined it or watch the video or check the links if they're shared to know more or less how GitHub works, you don't need to learn how to do a pull request if you don't want. If you are building this thing um, in your local environment and you don't know how to create a pull request using Git, it's fine. You can just go here at the top on the three of, uh, dots option, show code editor. I, I can explain this again oh, when, while we're working or we can open an issue and just copy whatever the code is, copy the, the code that, that you have here and paste it on the, on the issue. Say, this is the code that I, that I generated to create this template. And you can share it and someone else like a developer will create a PR if you don't know how to. So there's no barrier for you to contribute if you don't know, you don't feel comfortable creating a PR using Git. Just as long as you know how to navigate the issues and figure out, oh yes, I wanna and I wanna work on uh this one. Uh, whatever. You just copy and paste the code. I have marked a few of the issues as good first issue. Most of them are the ones related to the patterns. Um, Term has a few patterns already designed, like this one. This is our gallery grid. The the only thing that you need to do is try and replicate this in the editor and either paste the code here or create a um, pull request with the code. Um, but there's themes like poetry who doesn't have any patterns. Poetry is a theme that doesn't have any patterns. I think. Let me show you poetry. I think it's. I think I have it here. This is poetry. Apparently the header is not working. That's That should be an issue that we open. Uh, that's another another way we can contribute to the community themes is when we find a bug like this, we go and create an issue. We create an issue call, uh, for example, I'm gonna do it just in front of everyone. Poetry, header not working. Well, the header of the theme is not coming up. Ideally, because um, this one liner is horrible, uh, ideally you explain how to reproduce and uh, submit a screenshot so it's easy for anyone to reproduce and try and fix it. And I'm gonna do it right like that. Uh, so this theme, it's a very simple one. It's, um, whoops, it's meant to um, be made for, yeah, for poetry. So it doesn't, have, it's very simple, it's not finished and it could use some some patterns and it has none. It only has an index. The only design that it has is an index. So um, one of the issues is to to create patterns for it. So this is an open issue, and you could either design them on Figma if you if you don't feel confident designing in the editor, and share the the Figma designs in one of the uh, GitHub issues, and then a developer can pick them up and put them. Um, a developer or another designer can build them in the editor and put them here. Uh, or if you feel confident doing it in the editor, then you can share the code like I showed you uh, in one PR or in one of the issues. Um, there is no limit as to how many patterns we want to build on these themes or how creative we want to go with them. We we can do whatever we want with, the, with these patterns. So that's a, another way of working on them. Um, yeah, and lastly, if you you if you're feeling adventurous enough, you can design a full theme. You can go on Figma like here and create the templates. 
like your home, your archive, your about page, your post with the, your comments and all that. You have, for example, you can use console as a, as a template of how we usually um, build things like design for designers, design things to be built later. Ideally, we don't need the Figma step in between um, imagining a design and um, developing because there's no step. The editor should be enough, but so people need it. And it's also a nice way to, like uh, Spencer was saying before, to not limit yourself by the tools that you're using. Like if the editor, you, you don't know how to use the editor well enough and you feel like it's limiting your way of designing, using Figma first is also a good idea and also a good way to work. Um, whatever um, helps you the most. Hopefully, um, the more we get um, into how the editor works, the less we need to use Figma as a crutch uh, before we finish the process. Um, one key element that uh, I forgot to, to mention is that during this whole process, we, we will find things that can't be done in the editor or that we don't know how to do in the editor. We can help each other. Hopefully, um, the whole idea of using issues and, and GitHub is that GitHub will be a, a point of discussion. Like um, if you start working on one of the patterns that are already designed and you cannot finish because you don't know how to do it, which is something that I'm sure will happen because I'm sure there's things that can't be done because this design wasn't done with the uh, full capabilities of the editor in mind, like saying, I know for sure that everything that I design will be able to be built. Uh, it might not be the case. So if we find issues, we, you can just share the code that you have and say, hey, I, I went all the way and this is where I got stuck. I couldn't uh, figure out how to do this, this and that. And then we discuss together if we can find a way of doing it. And if we can't, we, uh, which is the magic of contribution in WordPress, it's we decide on a way forward. It could either be changing the design to fit whatever we, we can't do, or it could be trying and figure out a way to um, address whatever is happening in the editor that doesn't allow you to do it. Like for example, oh, there's no way to add border radius to this block that I want to use. So is there a way to do that? Let's see. The first step is creating a Gutenberg issue so that someone can pick it up and add that um, uh, control in the editor if it's missing. And if you share this, the, the issue that you opened here, I will look for uh, other contributors in, in, in Core and in Gutenberg that will help us and try and figure out how to bring those tools in the editor. So at the same time, we're both building a really nice team, learning how to build them, and designing really, really cool things. And also we're improving what the editor can do so that the next team can also use those tools, which is very key. Uh, and the, mainly the reason why this whole project exists because sure we can make a hundred of things, a hundred things that are look the, that all look the same at all. You have different colors and, and typography, but that's not what we want. We want to push the boundaries of what the editor can do so that the themes that we build are even better every single time. Um, please, I've been talking a lot and I know I've heard a lot of content that, and things that are uh, maybe confusing or that it's the first time that you've ever seen. Um, so if you have questions or concerns or if you feel like this is too much, please share it and I'll try and break it down as much as I can. I think everything's clear. Let's get to work. <laughs> um, my suggestion is that um, you go through the README file and all those links. Um, there are some courses in the README file. If you know nothing about um, at all, nothing about blog things, it's uh, this one and this one, log, low code blog thing course and simple site design with full site editing, I think. These are uh, on learn. And um, these are, I think they are all finished. And these are all really interesting. They might be a lot. They might be long to make, to do. So it might feel like if you're doing the whole, uh, the whole course, it will take like the full time of um, the mentorship. And that's not really what we want. 
but um figure out if you between uh, a way between being overwhelmed by the links and the courses and the um, documentation and all that and being able to figure out a way to contribute even if it's a little bit um go through all the issues on on the repo um go through the designs install the themes i i would suggest that what the first thing that you do that you install all the themes um if you don't know how to probably the best way is just downloading the files here with the zip and putting them on the themes folder in whatever installation you have on your local machine or you can go through wordpress playground and install them there um, I think there will be a way to share playground uh, playground link with the themes already installed. I'm not gonna look into it and check how the the themes look, what they're missing. Uh, maybe the first step is just submitting issues like I saw this is broken or improving the the issues that I opened that are one liners because I didn't have time to actually describe better uh, what was missing. Um, and if you have questions on the issues that are open, please do like either understand what this issue is trying to convey, like what why do I have to do on this on this issue, what needs to be done, and I'll try and me or anyone else that knows um, try to um, elaborate so that um, it's easier for people to um, create PRs and work on it. Um, yeah, uh, what else do I have? Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing now. I know it's a lot. Um, please use both the GitHub issues and Slack to um, share knowledge. Or you can also DM any of either of us uh, with any questions that you have or if you really don't know how to start. Um, I'll try to um, make a better initial setup issue, like um, how to start, what to do. Uh, like an issue or a post and I'll share on this on Slack so it's not as confusing as oh she shares so many things in the Slack and on the Zoom call what do I do <laughs> when, you, when you forget everything um, but in any case um, and help each other because um, we are there but um, hopefully this is a project because a lot of people will be able to um, share their knowledge with each other so yeah, uh, sometimes if we learn a lot of things at once, probably we're gonna miss something. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so the first thing is install block themes, not only from this uh, GitHub repository, from other repositories. Right? So if you visit WordPress startup slash themes, there are a lot, like more than 500 block themes. You can simply install them, just check them, see them, like how it works, if you haven't it already. So just just check them how it because block themes are totally different than classic themes we we are familiar with. Check them. What is editor? What is templates? What is templates bad? Try to find the course and other stuff. Just just go with them, and after that you can see the HTML markup that uh, Maggie showed you before. Like how you can see the paragraph, but in the in the core view you can see the core stuff of that particular paragraph. See that, and. Uh, also drag that uh, theme in your editor and see like how is coded, how codes are written. Simply just, just don't do that. We don't need to write the code manually. Simply check that. Oh, you can see the markup, the structure of that markup. And and you and you need to copy one template design, one design in the back in, in the editor. For example, Maggie saw the about a space. You have a Figma file of about page, and you need to try to replicate that in your machine. Once you are able to replicate that, and if you are not able to do next, just let us know. Hey, I have the replica of this Figma file in my editor. Now, what should I do? Probably we can show you the way to make the patterns and implement in that thing and probably make the GitHub issue and push it. So uh, you need to start it. Uh, and once you start it, probably you will find the way. And if you not, uh, uh, it's talking away. Just let us know. Probably we'll give some uh, sort of injection on on that issue, and uh, we can go ahead. So that is how we can do that. Uh, so testing the theme, uh, checking those themes, uh, and then uh, probably we'll give 
some idea that Maggie uh, recently uh, shared with you. And if you still need help, just let us know. Probably Maggie or me or one of us will find the time and sit with you and find the solution of them. Also, in the topic of uh, contributor day, um, I'm going to be leading the themes table. I know it's not the design table that you mentioned. I don't know what the design table is going to do. I actually never do because I'm not a designer. I'm a developer. Um, but um, we're going to be building these themes. We're going to be working on this um, on work Um Maybe there's a collaboration that could be done between the design table and the themes table. Um, we could talk that out. Um, and my, on the themes table, for sure, you can come and design. <laughs> like, there's no absolutely, if you're working on themes, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so, yeah, um, I think it's, it's um, community themes are probably the place where you can be most free designing anything because you don't really need to um, adhere to any guidelines. Like if you're designing a, a UX flow for the site editor, you're going to have to go through how um, all those forms are designed, like what are the guidelines and all that. But for a theme that you're building, you can, if you want to create a new theme from scratch, no one's going to stop you. Yeah. Uh, good question. Um, yeah. Are the community themes open to everyone to create? I mean, yeah, I know it's like the the yeah, great part. question, great question. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go uh through those specific. Um, uh, so the community themes are within the WordPress space. Uh, when they are released, they are released under the Word under the WordPress name. Uh, you will see in the same uh spot where the twenty twenty themes are. Um. Yeah, that's uh, uh, uh um, linked. Um, so you can check there that Stax and Blue Note are there. Those are community themes. The rest are like the default ones. Um, we will also be since the repository doesn't allow for more than one author. We give credit to everyone that works on it via uh, badges. We're gonna uh, if you work on community themes in whatever capacity, be it designing, coding, or just helping, discussing, and testing, you will get a theme developer batch at the end of the process. Um, anyone is welcome to join. You don't need any kind of um, knowledge. You don't need to pass any kind of anything. Just be willing to help and work. Uh, this is completely open. Mm -hmm. um but like how are is the this is just me being curious not really mm -hmm. uh hoping to do something like that but how is like creating a new community theme be determined like who yeah. decide or like what's the need we do <laughs> the contributors uh, do yeah, yeah we do. um there's no one um i i started this project and i've had people helping in many capacities since this started and I'm not like a lead or anything or I don't have I don't make the decisions or anything um we open issues and discuss like um, this team needs a new name um how should we call it we discuss it and then decide which we're we're choosing and there's no one that is saying we're going this way we're going that way um I will put a stop on things that I think are are not valid as in terms of code quality there are bad practices. I will put my feet down on that, but I won't stop um, something because I don't like the design and I hope no one does. As long as uh, it's a theme and it goes with the guidelines of the directory, which I think are linked in the readme, it, everything's fair game. Everything's yeah. fair game. Yeah, I might have um, ideas for you if I see something that m might be something that we can improve or something. But I won't say no, no. We want that. We don't want this, this this design because these are not default themes. A default theme is something that is very complex that will go on everyone's uh, WordPress installation. But these are not like that. You can decide and oh, I want to do this. Uh, a, a colleague of mine designed a theme that looks like Minecraft, and it's so, so niche and it looks amazing. It's great. So it's a blog theme. So be sure to check it out. Um, I think it's called Bedrock um yeah you can design whatever there's it's completely uh open for everything and we need more designers this has been a space for developers most of the time and we are transitioning so the designers are um 
having more uh, more of a say and leading this space. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Is there any question? Are there yeah, anything else? Uh, I have one question. Yes. Let's please. say that let's say that I can tackle an issue or a bug in a full site editor, you know, and I have to jump to VS Code. Since I have to deal with that particular syntax, that commented syntax that block teams use, is there any VS Code extensions, any tool that can help me speed up the pace? Because Maggie is a developer too. She might also feel weird dealing with that syntax. And I also yeah. do. Is there a tool that can help me be more productive, be more, you know, yeah. straightforward when, when coding in that syntax? Yeah. So the way I work with the, the markup for blocks is that I try to let, touch it as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah. usually works, works a treat, but um, sometimes it's a little tricky. There is a VS Code extension. Let me look for it. Um, that it's mainly for highlighting. It's called uh, WordPress, WordPress Syntax Highlighter. Let me get the link. That will help a little bit with readability. Oh, well, that's what the co copying from VS Code gave. gave. Um, that will help a little with readability. There are a few tools installed on the on the a few end, uh, node tools and scripts that we wrote uh, to help out with things like translation translating patterns, um, making links dynamic, and some cleanup I think for blocks than needed. Um, but generally, you will try to avoid it. So if you are, for example, say that you have a cover block and you have it in some way. And the design calls for a different color for the overlay than what it has. So instead of looking into the markup and trying to um, to change it, what I would do is change it in the editor and then cope the code and replace. Mm -hmm. um, that is usually the fastest way then, rather than writing it yourself. Because if you write the markup yourself, you're going to make mistakes. And then blocks are going to be broken in the editor you will see that you get an error, syntax error, and the block won't show on the editor if your mm -hmm. syntax is incorrect. Also, the syntax for blocks changes quite often. Um, mm -hmm. It has some deprecations in in place so that uh, all markup doesn't break, but mm -hmm. it will change in time when there's new features. So you don't really need to worry too much about keeping in... in um, um, knowing how every single block markup looks like, or that's something that you don't shouldn't concern yourself with, unless there's something really broken that really needs you to look into it. But most of the time I, 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 I see that that's not the case. I don't really need to write it myself, but I, I understand the, the, the concern because when you first look at the markup, it's like, what is this? Do I need to learn this exactly. like you know, a new language? Uh, but you really don't. And that's the whole idea behind it, that you don't have to do it. So if you're feeling again and again that you need to go back again to the code, then it's uh, good that you uh, point it out and so we can see how to help so that that doesn't happen to you. Um, it is important for you to understand the markup if you, if you want to learn how blocks uh, work. You don't need to if you're just building things, but it's it's cool to understand how how they work, um, especially if you want to build your own blocks. That's really that's which is something that it's very interesting too. Like there's so many blocks in core that don't do everything, and you need extra 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 blocks. And if that's something that interested you, I would really recommend uh, to check um, into contributing to core and Gutenberg too. Because those will be really nice, and there's I know there's a, um, an initiative going on to bring new blocks to Gutenberg and hopefully to Core too. Um, but yeah, the idea is that blockchain should need you to learn how to how the markup works. You probably do need to learn a little bit more how theme JSON looks like and how it works, which is what um, 
towards uh, the global start, it's probably more interesting for you to learn that than the markup because the markup is um, usually done by, not for you on 99% of the cases, you don't need to uh, even touch it, just copy and paste and replace. But yeah. Yeah, I understand. That, that, I understand the frustration. <laughs> yeah, and that explains one another question I had. It was about styling. Like, you'll be using yeah. the uh, the JSON file, right? You won't be using like something like SAS. No, oh, well, you can, you can. Um, so the way it works in Gutenberg, um, and sorry, not Gutenberg, WordPress, um, is that you have the global styles. Uh, let me show you if so that people who don't know it can also learn about it a little, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So again, with this thing that we have here in the, we are in the site editor and we are in one of the templates. And here, this is global style. And these are the styles for the whole website. Like if we want to change the colors and we want to change the background instead of white, we want it to be blue. This will change for the whole website. Um, and if we want the links to be orange, they all the links, not just everywhere, will change to orange. This, when we export the theme, will generate changes on theme JSON. And that is the file that has all that code, all that code. Also, again, you don't need to learn how it works if you don't want to, because this is already doing it for you. This is already making the changes, but sometimes it's uh, useful to learn how it works, um, depending on how deep you want to go th uh, through the rabbit hole. Um, you can, there's, uh, you can also change how specific um, blocks look like if I want to change how the headings work. Uh, this wouldn't be, this, uh, this is not the heading block. This is the like, the post title block, right? mm -hmm. which is, where is it? Search. Would it be possible to set up like an hour or an hour and a half meeting where we go through a process like this with one of the two mentors and we can just sort of flow with it because I have so many questions mm -hmm. that I would love to ask you from what I have learned mm -hmm. I don't have time right now but like for instance let's say we build a bunch of colors we have our color palette blah blah, blah and we accidentally hit one of the preset theme do we lose all of our colors and themes that we've set up mm -hmm. like because I'm um, really scared of that happening in yeah. the sites that I'm building with the block editor. Yeah. I feel like it has happened to me that I have lost everything. <laughs> so, okay. and I don't know why the back end is like that. If it is like that, like, why would you make it so fragile to lose everything? Yeah. But I don't anyway. think, uh, yeah. I don't think that uh, should happen. Um, okay. I'm not sure how, what the best way it is for that, because I, I tend to ramble a lot. And I don't know how much people are following me when I do this stuff because you guys are all super quiet. And <laughs> I'm not sure if you're quiet because you don't understand what I'm doing or because you are following me and I'm just dumping a lot of information. What um, if we the, did like a list of questions and yeah. submitted them to the two of you and then yeah. we set up an hour or an hour and what, a half? What, why do you think it's better to do that via Zoom and not via GitHub? Like, I think the, the like you said, I, I also learn by doing. And and I think this is part of the, the magic of the mentorship program. You have um, these themes are a playground for you. There's nothing that you can break here that will be broken for anyone because we won't deliver these themes until they're fine. They are working. So you can just play with them and figure out how you break them. Like I'm trying to do this template and I am figuring out that I did this and this broke. And then you open an issue and say, I tried this and, and this is my code or, or this is what I tried. And I, I've uh, uh, encountered this thing, this problem. And then we can discuss uh, async and, it, and it's open for everyone to see. And you don't need everyone to be here at the yeah. same time with some people in Australia, some people in Europe, some people in the US, some yeah. people in India, which uh, it's fine. We can absolutely do that. But I uh, there's no way that in an hour or half an hour, I can cover everything that you can think of. I might answer a lot of, a lot of questions, but probably not all. And still, it would be a little lacking. And, and it wouldn't have you doing the thing and figuring the things out. I think it's better if you try and figure things out and you get blocked and then 
um, we help out on guide and say, hey, maybe try this, maybe try that. Oh, that is happening because this thing is happening. And 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 you're learning for firsthand by by trying things out. Um, I I probably there's yeah, a, I there's think... something there's value on on doing a Zoom call about something in particular. Or if, also, there's do we have people that are, have different interest in this? Like designers have an interest, developers have a different one. Like uh, Sandra might want to learn a lot about markup and thin JSON and all that, and you might not. You might want to learn about uh, um, how the editor works and interacts. No, no, I, I, I think I got, I got the gist because I'm not supposed to make like static styles and I'm, I'm supposed to make it to be styleable. Is that a word? There's no way that the, the customer, the client can style by himself. So that's why the JSON file, right? I will declare mm. the palette, the link color, the defaults there, but it's open for yeah. the client you can also to decide. Where, where is it? You can also decide via thin JSON what the user won't be able to touch. You can decide, I don't want the user to change the colors. I don't want the user, because the user can go here and and change the palette that the theme is showing you. Like these are the themes, the, the colors from the palette and the user can decide, no, I want this to be uh, pink. And you maybe don't want to the, the 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 user to do that because you work really hard as a designer to decide which was the right color, <laughs> and you just want the user to use them, not to change them. So those are settings that can be changed via thin JSON. So that's something that the developer will want to know how to do because right now, in probably in the future of the will be, um, there's no way to there's no UI to block the controls. You need to learn how to do that via changing the same theme JSON file, and those are advanced. Uh, that's advanced knowledge. So do, do, we are we are working about we are talking about people who might have not never touched a block theme. So we are talking about uh, advanced knowledge, uh, which I can tell you. I, we can look into it, and if you open an issue or something, yeah. or you DM me, I'll I'll figure out and I'll tell you. You do it this way and that way. But yeah, again, um, I'm trying to figure out a way that something that will benefit everyone because we are a few, we are, I think, 10, 11 people, uh, mentees uh, for this project and with the different needs and knowledge. So I'm trying to figure out a way I can help everyone. Nice. Thank you, Maggie. It yeah. was very <laughs> clarifying for me. Cool. I go higher run. <laughs> Actually, I had to go. Um, anyone else has any questions or concerns? Or something that you want to share that you're excited about learning? Because, yeah. Yes, I, I think my, uh, my, I need to, you understood to study me. a lot. <laughs> 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 We need to study the, all the documentation and uh, mm -hmm. look through the themes and see mm -hmm. how it's made everything. And then I think I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I you. want to encourage you to do something, which is uh, look into whatever you need to look on those codes and all those references. But you might end up with a million links and you need to uh, make use of the mentorship and the mentorship is not a bunch of places that you gotta study. Uh, you can do that on your own time before or after the mentorship, and it's fine. Uh, it will be there. But uh, uh, use us. So try things, break things, and mm. come back to us with whatever you found. Uh, so mm. I tried this little thing, and it didn't work, and I don't know why. Um, why is this not working like I was expecting? Or um, how can I do this thing? I tr I'm trying to do this pattern, and I don't know where to start. Uh, can you help? Um, Stuff like that, even if it's, and if, if I need to give you extra links, like, um, okay, so if you want to do that, you need to follow this thing. And I'll give you the link and I'll tell you instead of explaining it myself. But I'd rather give you the links myself again than have you spend three weeks without doing anything because you have so much to read, <laughs> which is probably something that is good that you have. But, uh, but definitely try things out. This is a playground. We're not breaking core. Uh, not, none of this will be pushed in two weeks like the core people are. Um, mm -hmm. So please try things, break things, and come back and share things with other with the rest of the cohort. 
No. So you need to start it today immediately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there will be a test. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Anna, Elsa, you both are attending work major, right? So, yeah, I'm too. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm also looking for the design table with, uh, lead for work major. We still, uh, like, didn't find anyone who wants to lead the table. So, if you are interested, just ping me. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably we, you can help. Make a joint me. design themes table, put them together. So yeah, the designers yeah, yeah. go to the design team. Yeah, so do that. I, I just need a single person who can lead the design table. At least yeah. I need someone to show in my opening slide and closing slide. Someone can handle that. Volunteer so if you yourself. Are, <laughs> yeah, if you are interested, just uh, message me in Slack and then we can have discussion uh, how we can do that part actually. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we stay a few minutes more, uh, but we really uh, respect your interest, uh, your time, and the value that you are giving to the community. So let's learn together. Let's break things together so that we can grow together. And uh, so try it today. If you find any queries, problem, then just let us know. Probably me, Maggie will quite busy. Um, next week, uh, but we'll try to uh, get back to you as soon as uh, we can. Uh, till then, just uh, uh, study some things that are available in WordPress or, or also in GitHub repository. And if you find quick queries, we will uh, able to answer in WordCamp as well. We have themes table, we have uh, WordPress uh, blog theme building workshop as well in the uh, last day of WordCamp Asia. So you can also join that uh, workshop and uh, get more idea about the things that we talked today. Probably if you attend that session, you don't need to worry about where to start, how to start. So okay. that is that is a good uh, thing. If you spend one and a half hour in that workshop, then you will uh, easily start making blockers. So I think we can wrap up now. Uh, thank you, everyone, and see you in Taube. Yeah, okay. thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.